Hey there, chocolate friends. It is getting to be fall, and that means it's chocolate season again, and food festivals, chocolate festivals are coming around. In the fall, we have the Dallas Chocolate Festival, the Salon du Chocolat, the Northwest Chocolate Festival, and many, many more. So I wanna give you some tips to make sure that you get the most out of a festival that you attend. And I've separated into three parts. So I've got things to do before the festival, things to do while you're at the festival, and specifically things having to do with tasting chocolate, because that's what I'm all about. <laughs> all right, so let's start. The number one rule you have to remember is that there's no rules. The most important thing to do when you go to a festival is to have fun and have a good time. Don't stress out about it have a good time that's what it's about but if you'd like some tips that i have learned over the years from going to festivals then here they are and i've broken them down into three sections before the festival at the festival and specifically having to do with tasting chocolate so before the festival you want to number one go to the festival website you want to find out who's going to be there, what lectures or presentations are being given, check out the makers that are going to be there, and plan a strategy. Because depending on the size of the festival, you may not be able to get to see everything. And you want to make sure you see and hear the people and things that you want to see and hear. So that's my number one tip. The second one is plan out your transportation. If you get to the festival grumpy, it's a bad way to start your day. And when it comes to festivals, transportation can be frustrating. Take an Uber so that you don't have to find parking. Take the subway or metro so that you are like not part of traffic problems. Make sure that that's not part of your frustration. So figure that out beforehand. Number three, pre-purchase your tickets if you can. And if you're able, buy the VIP ticket. Often VIP tickets will get you extra time before the rest of the general ticket population gets in there and other perks to go along with it. So if you can afford that, that's fantastic. You'll get more out of your experience. Pre-purchasing the ticket also means you don't have to stand in two lines. There's usually a line to get in and a line to buy a ticket. So it cuts down your lines by half. The other thing is make sure you find the people who are as crazy about this food as you are. Check for meetups, plan for meetups with your Insta friends or your friends who love chocolate, the people that you've met, the community that are focusing on these festivals and these foods, make a meetup plan with them. The day before the festival, oh, well, let me tell, okay, let me go back one. So the next one is Number five, prepare to pay in different ways. Be very, Venmo is super easy, card is super easy, but if the Wi-Fi goes out, then they're not working. So make sure you have some cash as backup or cash if you wanna pay like that. Sometimes vendors will be, uh, we don't take cash. Sometimes they'll be, we only take cash. So make sure you have a multiple a variety of ways to pay for product that you want to buy. And the last thing, right before the festival, make sure that one, you don't have any huge spicy meals. You don't want to be too full to eat anything the next day and ha get a good night's rest. Because again, if you're going in frustrated, tired, it's going to change the whole experience of the festival. So those are things to do before the festival. Now let's move on to things to do while you're at the festival. All right, so my first tip for things to do at the day of the festival is the same as my last tip from before. It's have a light breakfast, and if you can, a little bit of exercise before you go. You don't want to fill up your tummy. You don't want to have super spicy food that's going to um, affect your palate before you go. That's my first tip. Tip number two for the day of the festival, wear comfortable clothing and shoes. We're talking hashtag stretchy pants. 
you don't have to wear like pajamas and sweatpants, but wear something that's going to be comfortable for you to be in all day. And comfortable shoes are important because again, if your feet are screaming at you, you are not going to get the best experience that you would out of a festival. That's really important. Number three, pack a portable phone charger. If you're using your phone to take notes, to take pictures, to um, coordinate meetups, to add a timer so that you don't miss presentations, you don't want your phone to die when you're using it that much. So pack a portable charger. Number four, I mentioned this one in my press tip, set a phone timer for the presentations you don't want to miss. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of the festival and you're like, oh, I wanted to go see that presentation at two o'clock and now it's 2.45 and it's closed and I can't get in and I missed it all. Set a timer on your phone so that you won't miss out on what you want to see. Number five, arrive early. You will in that way avoid some of the crowds that wake up at a later time. But here's a super hot tip that um, you can also use when you arrive early. When the doors open, head straight for the back of the facility. Like zip straight as far back as you can go because people are people and they will get distracted and they will stop at the first booths and that will give you a little bit of time with the people that are at the back to have a more personal experience with them. It'll probably only give you like 5, 10, 15 minutes until people filter back there, but that's enough time to introduce yourself, to try a chocolate, to talk to a maker. So it will buy you a little bit of personal time. Tip number six, have a comfortable, reusable, bag that you can carry your purchases and other stuff like freebies. Something that's going to be comfortable on your shoulders, not a thin strap that's going to cut in because chocolate and other foods can start to weigh you down. So you want something comfortable that you can carry around that also follows any bag requirements that the festival might have. Number seven, take lukewarm water. Um, you want this because lukewarm water for specifically for chocolate will flush the cocoa butter off of your tongue um, You just have to be careful that you're not drinking too much because water does fill up your stomach a small palate cleansing snack like plain crackers or an apple and Some tissues because those are the things that I find that I need at the festival and you're gonna want to cleanse your palate in between tasting Number eight, ask questions and take notes if that's your thing. Don't ask something that they've been asked five million times that day. Be unique. Show them that you prepared, you thought, and you're really interested in what makes their product stand out and be special. And my last tip for the day of the festival is number nine, Enjoy all parts of the festival. Make sure that you sample all of the things that the festival has to offer. People have spent a lot of time and thought into putting this festival together and you want to get the most out of it, most bang for your ticket buck. So that is the day of the festival. And those are pretty much for any kind of food festival that um, you would go to, they would be valid. Now I want to give you some specific tips related directly to chocolate. So you're going to a chocolate festival. That's exciting. You've got the tips of what to do for any food festival. Let's talk about tips specific to a chocolate festival. So number one, you are going to want to learn how to taste chocolate. I've made a video on that. I'll put a link up above so that you can learn to do that before you go because that will give you a better experience understanding the difference between makers. Number two, protect your palate. Palate fatigue is 100% real. And if you're not tasting like a lot of chocolate, your palate's gonna start to check out after four to eight samples. So, I mean, even for me, 
when I go, I'm starting to tap out around 20 samples and I eat a lot of chocolate and I judge a lot of chocolate, but it becomes more difficult to pick up nuances that the chocolate maker wants you to understand when you hit around 20 samples, even for experienced chocolate tasters. So don't go and taste 20 Coco Camille bars. Taste, plan, protect, protect your palate is what I have to say. Think about what you're gonna put in your mouth. If you've had this bar a million times and you know what it tastes like, don't sample that bar again. Sample something different and interesting and something that you haven't had before. And also something that's not gonna destroy your palate for the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so the next tip, number three, if you see something that you wanna buy, don't walk away. Buy it when you see it because they often sell out. At the Northwest Chocolate Festival, I've had this happen where I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll buy that. I just wanna go over here and sample this one first. And then I come back and it's gone. And then I, you don't have the chance to buy it. So if you see it, you want it, and you can buy it. The next tip, number four, is to look for limited edition chocolates or chocolate bars. So a lot of times the makers will bring special to the festival chocolate bars, things that they've only made that you can only buy there. So look for those instead of the ones that you've had a hundred times. Number five, keep an open mind. These craft chocolate makers are thinking about their flavors. And if you see a chocolate bar that is something like, holy cow, that's weird. Like, let's say white chocolate and lobster. Um, don't write it off before you taste it. Keep an open mind. I have had white chocolate and lobster bars and it was pretty good. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it should work, but this maker, these makers, they're crafting these bars to give you a great experience. And so keep an open mind when you're tasting. The next tip, number six, is you don't have to eat the whole sample. If they give you a big sample, there's no rule that says you have to eat it all. You eat as much or as little as you want. Again, protecting your palate, not filling up your stomach. All of these things come into it. And then the last one for specific to chocolate is that if there is, well, I guess this was not specific to chocolate. We can go for anything. But if there's lines at two different places and you have a buddy, use the buddy system. And you can do this for samples um, as well if you don't want to eat the whole sample. So break it in half, share it with your buddy, uh, buddy up and each get into a line for samples and then come back together and share. So use a buddy. Uh, when you have found your tribe, <laughs> it's good to uh, share the fun with somebody else. So those are my festival tips specific to chocolate festivals. But again, I want to iterate that the number one rule is that there's no rules. Go and have fun. Enjoy the samples. Enjoy meeting the makers. Enjoy hanging out with other people who share a passion like you do. Julia Child once said, people who love to eat are always the best people. So when you're at the festival, talk to the person next to you, talk to your maker, talk to the person sitting next to you at the presentation, find out about them, find out about why they love chocolate, why, what brought them to the Northwest Chocolate Festival. Share your weird with other people. I have this I'll put a picture up here. This is, a, uh, I have this framed in my office over my computer because it really speaks to me. So when you find your weirdos, hang out with them and enjoy your weirdness together. So I hope that you can use these tips. If you have other tips that you think I should know about for attending a food festival or something that I missed, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you've gone to a festival or tell me a festival that I might not know about, a regional one that I may not know about, because I'm always excited to go to a new festival to try something new and to see what you guys are doing when you're going on your chocolate adventure. So I hope that's helpful to you. I hope that you have a good time at your festival and I hope that I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.